All right, we are on session uh, one today. Uh, thank you very much, all of you, for attending. Now, uh, my uh, way of teaching the laws is that I start from the uh, back of the law, law book, from Appendix A. Now, whatever study of the laws, uh, criminal law, or civil, or whatever I have done, uh, I have always found that the definitions are the first chapter. But somehow here we've got uh, the definitions at the end of the book. Uh, though if I were to rewrite this, I would put them in the first, in the beginning. But this is what they have preferred to do. And because of this, I find that many, many empires uh, do not read this in the first instance. Do not read these in the first instance. As the title tells you, that definitions and explanations of words and phrases not defined in the text. So these are things that will appear in the text. Now, we will just go over these things uh, briefly, very briefly, uh, because uh, without breaking our heads over it, just to see that what is there, it is that you should be aware that these definitions are there. And a lot of times, uh, these definitions have a particular meaning in the laws and will help you to interpret the particular law in a better way, all right? Uh, and uh, also, so it will help you to interpret the laws in a better way. And as we go along, these concepts will be uh, reiterated and you will have a better understanding of each of these concepts. Right now, I am just reading through. Right now, I am just reading through. Uh, that is all I would want you to do. Otherwise, when we come to it later on, we will, uh, when the, all these terms appear again and again, you will get a clearer understanding of the meaning and its effects in the law, uh, each term's effect in the law. Some of them are very crucial. Some of them are very routine, like uh, the game. We know it is the game of cricket. All right, a match. We know what a match is. What the toss is, we know. All right. Now, before the toss, is it critical? Is that any time before the toss, on the day, the match is expected to start? Or in the case of a one-day match, on the day the match is due to take place. All right? So, before the toss, does it mean, uh, say, uh, uh, 1st October is the first day of the match? It means before, on any day, right from sunrise, any day, on the 1st of October, it doesn't mean the 30th of September. All right. Before the match is at any time before the toss, not restricted to the day on which the toss is to take place. So before the match means even 30th September, where covers are to be put uh, before the match. So it's like and including the day of the match before the at any time before the toss. This is a meaning which is critical to understand for some other purposes also. During the match is at any time after the toss, after the toss until the conclusion of the match. At any time, during the match, is, that is the definition of during the match. Playing time is at any time between the call of play and the call of time. We call time, uh, play when, we call play when the uh, game begins in any session. And we call time at the end of that particular session, whether it is an interruption or it is an interval. Okay. And so the time in be between these two calls is uh, playing time. Conduct of the match includes any action, absolutely any action relevant to the match at any time on any day of the match. On any day of the match. It could be uh, to do with rolling, with cover, or whatever. Remarking of these, any, anything at all. Any action uh, by the players or whatever. Implements used in the match, uh, the laws use the terms implement and equipment. Both have a different meaning. Implements used in the match are the bat, the ball, stumps, and the base, the four of them. Uh, these are the implements of the game. External protective equipment is any visible uh, item of apparel worn for protection against external blows. We know that uh, external protective helmet like pad leg guards or uh, uh, helmets are for protection against external blows. 
but remember we are uh, this is confined to only visible items he may be wearing a chest guard or he may be wearing a thigh guard we are not concerned with that we are concerned with external protective equipment that is external protective equipment is a term that we have to understand in internally he may wear anything at all all right uh external protective equipment for a batter now since i mentioned implements let me talk about equipment a batter's equipment is his or her bat as defined above together with any external protective equipment that he is wearing a fielder's equipment is any external protective equipment that he is wearing all right what he is allowed to wear what he is not allowed to wear we'll come to that later uh for a batter the items permitted are a protective helmet external leg guard or batting pad or bat and batting gloves and if visible his forearm guard sometimes uh, forearm guards are worn uh, under a sweater or uh, roll down sleeve then they are internal he is wearing them but they are internal but if he rolls up his sleeve then they are it is an external leg guard it can be both right for a fielder only a protective helmet for a fielder only a protective helmet is uh, permitted except in the case of a wicket keeper for whom the wicket keeping pads and gloves are also permitted a wicket keeper is also a fielder and uh, other than the wicket keeper uh, any other fielder is allowed only to wear the helmet that is why you will not allow him to wear his shin guards above his trousers outside his trousers you will not allow him to do that and if uh, we may spend some time for him to uh, or let him go outside and do it if his uh, trousers are too tight and he won't fit many 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 players uh, exchange uh, put on these uh, shin guards and call for the shin guards and put them on on the field uh, without waste of time he should be able to do it and we will definitely will never allow him to uh, wear it externally okay and if he does wear it externally it is uh, it is not allowed and therefore it will uh, attract a fire and penalty all right we we dealt with equip uh, okay a protective helmet is headwear made of hard material and designed to protect the head neck or the face for the purpose of interpreting these laws of cricket such a description will in, uh, include face guard grills and neck guard we don't see a neck guard too often like we see with the hockey goalkeeper i mean this is a very sensitive spot if a ball hits this place he's gone the player is gone i would want to see more of this the neck guard hanging neck guard here we don't see it. we see the grill we see the visor we see the protective side here but we don't see this neck guard they are vital uh, after a few injuries and uh, the deaths of uh, huge uh, there is greater awareness of uh, being careful and in a lot of junior cricket uh, in many countries the wearing of helmet has been made compulsory and even in uh, bigger countries and i i gen- i really feel that the time has come for umpires to wear protection umpires to in i think it was in november 2021 that i wrote to the icc and to the bcci that uh, let us not wait for somebody to die let us not wait for somebody to die only yesterday there was a video of uh, uh, in one of the practice matches the umpire had to duck the ball three times three times he was lucky nowadays the ball comes with a real rush the bats are such the ball comes with a real rush at the umpire and let us seriously seriously let us not wait till somebody dies uh, is uh, but they haven't uh, done anything about it yet and a lot of umpires also tend to oppose this thing i would the kind of protection i would want an umpire to wear is definitely the helmet there are good attractive helmets in lacrosse and all other games which do not hamper your hearing and uh, sight but give you good protection even up to here uh, you may and uh, most certainly an abdomen guard and 
I would want you to protect your knees, your shin. Uh, you get a sustain a shin, shin fracture, or you can recover. But uh, knee injury will, will is career threatening. And uh, there are so many. You can search on the internet. You get so many clips of uh, near hit and real hit, bad hit. So I feel that it is required. But this is uh, something beside the point. Uh, the back. The following are to be considered as part of the bat. This also appears in Law 5 con uh, concerning the bat. Whenever the law speaks about the bat, whenever the, the law uses the word bat, it will not tell you what part of the bat. It will use the term bat. That the term bat is supposed to mean the whole of the bat. Naturally, the whole of the bat itself. The whole of the glove or glove worn on the hand or hand holding the bat. The whole glove, it will include that. It will not tell you it is uh, hit the glove. It will tell you bat only. The law will tell you bat. Or the hand or hand holding the bat if the batter is not wearing a glove on that hand. And or, or on those hands. Okay. Uh, this definition is repeated in, the, in law 5 and it is significant. But the whole idea, we all know this. We know this. But the whole idea is that uh, to, for us to understand, the law will not tell you every time that uh, it won't elaborate it. Won't elaborate it. Like, like it will not elaborate that held in the batter's hand. Contact between the batter's hand or glove worn on his or her hand or any, in any part of the bat shall constitute the bat being held in that hand. Held in the hand means that contact between the hand and any part of the bat. It may be the toe of the bat, not necessarily the handle. And you need not be holding it like something. Sometimes when we hold, we hold uh, between thumb and forefinger. But mere contact, mere contact with the bat is enough of the hand. Mere contact with his foot is not enough. If I, if uh, the batter has a bat lying on the ground and he places his foot on the handle, the bat, bat is not in hand. He is in contact with his, with his foot, but the bat is not in hand for the purposes of this law. All right? Okay? Uh, held in the batter's hand means that contact between the batter's hand or glove worn on his hand and any part of the bat that constitutes uh, the uh, any part of the bat shall constitute the bat being held in uh, that hand. The playing area we very well know the field of play within the boundary. The square we know, though it is not a square, it is a rectangle most of the time, is a specially prepared area. Field all cricketers know what a square is. The outfield, of course, is outside the square. There is a pitch, there is a square, and there is outfield. Everybody who plays cricket and umpires cricket knows these terms. Uh, nothing to repeat uh, here, nothing much here. Now, behind the popping crease, we know what behind the popping crease is the whole area uh, behind the popping crease. In front of the popping crease, we know what the crease is. We learn what the crease is. And uh, it should not be mistaken with the crease marking, which may be this much or it may be this much. It is one of the edges, which is the crease. Uh, in front of, in relation to any marking, this is a general term. Uh, the striker's end is as good as the wicketkeeper's end, which is the same thing. Where the striker stands to receive the ball, we know all of that. All right. Uh, the wicketkeeper's end is the same as the striker's end. The bowler's end is where the end from which the bowler delivers the ball. Uh, in front of, these are just terms which have been defined, we know all of them, you need not read all of them. In front of the line of the striker's wicket, this is vital for us to understand, that it is not from the center of the stumps or from the bowling crease, it is uh, the area of the field of play in front of an imaginary line joining the front of the stump. The stumps are so wide, there is an imaginary line going from Alongside the stumps, in front of the stumps is that. Similarly, 
behind the wicket is the area of the field of play behind the imaginary line joining the back of the stumps at the appropriate end all right it is behind the wicket is that now behind the wicket keeper means naturally behind the wicket but it also means that in line with both set of stumps both line like for instance that uh, the fielder's helmet when not in use is placed behind the wicket behind the wicket keeper uh, it should be ideally it should be in line with the stump many a times uh, a fielder i have seen that he plays goes and rush uh, the slip fielder rushes and places it there and hastily and it is not placed properly you please feel free to let him do it properly because that is the safest position uh, in line even there the ball can go and strike it but to place it towards the leg side or towards the off side is inviting trouble so you, it would be in order for the umpire to tell him to place it properly that it ought to be uh, behind the wicket in line with the wicket is generally what you would want him to do uh, placing it uh, somewhere at the uh, first slip is inviting trouble all right no trouble for you inviting trouble for the team what you will do is about five runs on it we know what is the offside we know what is the onside we know what is the inside edge the inside edge is the same side as the nearer wicket nearer wicket or you might say that uh, the inside edge is uh, from where the umpire stands all the edges which are nearer the umpire are the inside edges or back edges where you know where you stand at uh, the bowler end and there is a crease the frame is there all the edges of the markings which are closer to you are the creases not the far end not the far end all right we know all this one important definition is where the law uses the raw law uses terms like the strikers and umpire we know what that is we know what a bowler and umpire is who the bowler and umpire is but here this is significant that the umpire is whenever the law uses the word umpire alone the law tells us that when it is used it always means the bowler and umpire though it full this is sometimes used where the term umpire is used it always means the bowler and umpire that is what the law is telling us so that is the definition of the term umpire all right now there are many duties that the umpires together agree or uh, perform together so therefore there you will see they come across the term uh, umpires together agree applies to all decisions with the umpire are to make jointly and as students of uh, the laws of cricket i would ask you to create a page in your notebook joint decisions of umpire joint decisions of umpire and as we come along each of them i suggest that you <clears throat> give me a second <clears throat> oh. okay uh i would suggest to you that have a page for all these there are quite a list and if you are preparing for an examination one of the things that i like to ask is uh, the budding umpire is name any three uh, joint decisions that the umpire takes so and you don't have to think those up it will be before you uh, create elaborate notes i suggest you create elaborate note for your study that uh, and this is one area where you can start uh, work on immediately all right batting side of course we know member of the batting side is one of the nominated players or any authorized replacement all right uh, he is also a member of the batting side the striker we know the striker who the non striker is what is the batter's ground behind the crease is a batter's ground original end is the end at which the where a batter was when the ball came into play for the delivery i was at the striker's end that is my original end the other guy was at the non striker's end that is his original end i'll tell you why this uh, concept is important you i'm sure you know it 
wicket he has left is that while running between wickets he has left this wicket then he has left that wicket and some incident happens uh, in between so is the wicket at which the batter was at the start of the run in progress whenever a run multiple runs are taken i have just left the non striker wicket so that is the wicket i have just left it is not it might not be my i am the striker uh, my original end is the striker end but this is the non striker end is the wicket i have all just left batting position a batting position is the position and posture adopted by the striker it is basically batting guard the law makers uh, uh, recently what they did was they changed it to batting position instead of guard because a lot of in a lot of countries Uh, in which uh, the laws are translated uh, into various languages they had a massive problem translating guard in their language now guard has a definite meaning uh, sentry or all that uh, guard on your guard and all that there is different many meanings so they they were they didn't want any ambiguity and in in uh, deference to their uh, difficulty understanding their difficulty they have changed this batting position batting guard to batting position what was earlier batting guard i might say the same thing uh, while we speak also batting position or batting guard it is the same thing all right the laws now call it a batting position is the position a posture adopted by the striker to receive a ball delivered by the bowler this is where he takes his guard or he takes his position a normal batting position is one which the striker could be reasonably expected to defend his wicket a normal batting position is important for us from the point of view of law 22 where the term is used in the case of wide a normal position means any sensible batsman's position normal batting position not my eccentric i am an eccentric fellow and i come and ask the umpire to give me a guard one foot outside leg stump i'll oblige the umpire will oblige all right you're an idiot but that is if you want a guard there i'll give it to you or 6 inches outside leg stump all right i'll give it to you i am eccentric but the law makers are supposed to the laws want you to take into account a normal guard position batting position guard position. of any rational human being any rational human being not this git chap right when we come to law 22 i'll discuss it in more detail now for the purposes of these laws waist height is defined as the point at which the top of the batter's trousers would conventionally be when he is standing upright at the popping tree this is the waist height this is important for us for the point to, from the point of view of waist height ball and all that and nowadays you see that uh, no ball is to be given for this now here what we understand uh, now here this is one of the abnormal descriptions in the game of a common term waist this is a very abnormal definition a waist we understand is above the waist see it is not waist is not a point it is not a point if you understand waist waist is a 4 or 5 inch uh, area starting from the top of your hip bone and ending at your uh, at your first rib that is the waist that is the waist what you would anybody wearing a kamar band if you seen anybody kamar wearing a kamar band Uh, that will display it. Uh, if I am a batter, I wear a kamar band, and a lot of uh, Maharajas used to wear a kamar band into into a cricket match. That is the waist. What we define as waist. It begins at the you know uh, what do you call it? Thirty six, twenty four, thirty six. That kind of thing. This area. That is the waist. And uh, that is the uh, and uh, above the waist. will necessarily mean where the waist ends and will necessarily mean the rib cage and the head above the waist means the rib cage and the head and as per the original meaning that is what we were supposed to protect 
that is what we were supposed to protect we as umpires are the rib cage and the head and shoulder the rib cage and the back uh, of the batsman but what has happened here is uh, unfortunately uh, the waist height is now lowered waist above the waist term above the waist is now lowered to the level of the place where the belt is worn a belt is not conventionally worn for in your trousers where you wear, wear the waist belt and uh, you but this is a law and we have to follow that this is what when we judge we judge uh, full pitch deliveries this is the level at which it will judge the bowler has in fact lost uh, vital 4 inches vital 4 inches which he could have bowled a little higher but now he has to uh, his uh, he will be no ball at this level earlier he would be no balled above this level that is what has uh, happened and uh, when uh, icc communicated this uh, to us mcc communicated this change to the general public in their they generally have uh, issue uh, note where they explain why certain changes have been made and uh, what they said was that for a number of years uh, this is how the law the uh, this waist height is being uh, used practice in professional cricket which is at cloud the nine level cricket it is that is how it is been and from there they have imported it here in the basic laws earlier the basic laws were different they were practicing it differently at icc level the umpires and the match referees etc now it has been on made on par i recall uh and i know the people responsible for doing this uh, i recall that i was umpiring uh, the challenger trophy at mohali the series of india a india b india c that kind of thing uh, and uh, jawagal shrinath was there i do not know in what capacity he was not a match referee at that time i think he was one of the commentator he was not a match referee and uh, i was at square leg in one of the matches i was at square leg and uh, dinesh karthik received a ball which was uh, a little high and uh, the square leg umpire the bowler and umpire was uh, tej handu he looked at me as umpires do and looked at me to uh, about checking with me the height of the ball i said no it is fine i said no it is fine and uh, though dinesh karthik uh, tried to tell me that it was high we we'll let him go he said no we are not calling that a no ball a uh, two experienced umpires judged that as not too high and he had to go uh, jawagal happened to shrinath happened to meet me later on uh, during that day perhaps or maybe the next day there were matches there were series of matches uh and he start brought the conversation to height waist height i said look jawagal as far as i know uh waist height is above the waist means this is the waist and rib cage and above is the waist where you wear the belt is not above waist height it is an area it is not a point so we had this conversation there and i am sure he was one of those people who pushed vigorously pushed for this definition he had it when he became the match referee he must have influenced people there and uh, they accepted his point of view and there might be others who agreed with him uh, and uh, now jawagal shrinath being a bowler has lowered the target for the bowler by about 4 or 5 inches about 4 or 5 inches i don't think that is quite right it is in the fitness of things that above waist height means rib cage that is what we are supposed to protect if a ball comes and hits me on my navel it's not going to hurt me all right it has hurt me because it is there some impact but it is the rib cage and the head that is to be protected uh, though it that shouldn't be uh, how it is but anyway uh, that's quite beside that just my idea and uh, i am only telling you how it all started now that the law makers have capitulated to what the work being done in the in professional cricket and we are to follow it where he wears the belt but the bowler's target is now lowered 
okay now fielder <coughs> the fielding side is the side we know what the fielding side is a member of the fielding side will include the authorized replacement or substitute for such nominated player he is part of the fielding side any substitute or replacement for a fielder he becomes now the part of the fielding side all right the substitute the nominated player has gone out the substitute is the part of the fielding side fielder is an important definition uh, that you have here is one of 11 or fewer players who together with now it can fielder can be 11 or less than 11 so fielder together represent the fielding side on the field of play now this definition includes not only both the bowler wicket keepers we know that the bowler and wicket keeper also and also nominated players were legitimately on the field of play together with players legitimately acting as substitute for absent or nominated it excludes uh just read up what how this will affect certain things it excludes any nominated player who is absent from the field of play and who has not who has been absent from the field of play and who has not yet obtained the umpire's permission to return uh we will discuss this when we come but right now Uh, now they clarify that a uh, uh, player going out to fetch the ball or stepping out to sign an autograph or retrieve a ball from the stand he is gone out temporarily in the discharge of his duties he has not left the field in this definition he has not left the field he remains uh, on the field so to say substitutes replacements and runners a substitute is a player who takes the place of a we know what it is uh but a substitute our uh, activities are limited to fielding we know that there are certain things a substitute cannot do which is batting is he cannot do uh, he cannot uh, act as captain and he cannot uh, also keep wicket unless the umpire allows him to do it so these are the things he cannot do uh, he is one of the he is not one of the nominated players a replacement player the law allows you that once you have nominated the uh, a player in your list the laws allow you to change that but which is with the permission of the opposing captain then he is the legitimate he is also a legitimate part of the team now of the fielding team or the batting team okay replacement uh, activities on the field of play are no more limited than those of any nominated he is a full fledged nominated player he can bat he can bowl he can keep wickets he can do whatever he is a full wet fledged nominated player nominated player a runner is a nominated player we will look at what are runners uh, who run for another nominated player all right and is unable to run bowler we know what is over the wicket round the wicket what is the delivery swing is where the arm is rotated that is how a bowler bowls delivery side of the definition is important for us to know it is the stride during which the delivery swing is made when the bowler runs up there is he there is a number he takes a number of strides this one stride is different because that is where in which he delivers the ball and he takes the deliver the delivery swing now he may not actually deliver the ball it is still the delivery stride okay he may whether he delivers the ball or not is not the question uh whether the ball is released or not but it is still the delivery side now the delivery side the beginning and the end of the delivery side is important for us uh, uh, very important for you to understand it starts when the bowler's back foot lands for that side his back foot lands his body goes sideways his back foot lands we have seen a bowler bowl and ends when the front foot lands in the, the same side front foot lands delivery side is over front foot back foot lands the delivery side begins front foot lands the delivery side is over the side after is completed when the next foot lands that is when the back foot of the delivery stand lies again that is regardless the ball the ball is struck or strikes the ball unless specifically defined mean that the ball is struck by the bat or strikes the bat is just a technical term used in the case of ball and bat we will come to this again full pitch is of course we know that it is a full toss 
without having touched touch the ground it has reached the striker which is a full toss uh, which we know it normally as a full toss or it is also that is also termed as a full pitch delivery okay run now runs to be disallowed there are two terms either the runs are disallowed or the runs are not to be scored this definition is important for us a run to be disallowed is one that in law should not have been taken there are many cases where runs are disallowed it is not only to be cancelled but the batters are to be returned to their original end like of a leg by or uh, uh, of a pad a padding which i have deliberately done no runs are allowed and if i reach the other end i will be sent back there that run is being disallowed and it also follows whenever runs are being disallowed it follows that the striker the batter two batters will be returned to their original end they will be returned it always follows it always follows run disallowed means you will return the two batters to their original end okay uh, a run not to be scored is one that is not illegal it is not illegal like you taken run and one of them is short it is a legitimate run except that it is not allowed i am going to disallow not disallow not it will not be scored let us uh, use the term uh, the proper term is not disallowed but it will not be scored it is a legitimate run but you did not take it properly you did not take it properly it is not a properly executed run it is not a run that has been made so the question of cancellation does not arise the loss of the run so attempted is not a disallowed and the batters will not be returned to their original end on that account will not be returned on that account of that they will not be returned uh the person the person uh is my flesh and blood and also whatever i am wearing any clothing or legitimate external protective equipment that i am wearing except in the case of a batter is bat 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 is not part of his person okay a hand whether gloved or not is not holding the bat is part of the striker's person we know that if i am if the, my hand is holding the bat it is part of the bat but if it is free of the bat it is part of my person and not part of the bat if it is holding the bat i can be given out caught if the ball hits me here or my entire glove we'll come to that when we, the entire glove but if this is loose it is part of the person i can be given out lbw of this of the hand when it is free of the bat i can sh- i'll show you a video where uh, the striker is out lbw of his hand out lbw of his i was i while playing i have been given out lbw of, of a sweep of my chest i was hit here and out lbw that is the person it doesn't mean uh, leg before wicket doesn't mean leg uh, only all right no item of clothing is part of a striker's person unless it is attached to him so if it is attached to him it is part of his person it also means that if it is attached to him it is also part of his person for a batter a glove being held but not worn is part of his person if the striker is wearing the many batsmen sunil gavaskar used to do that when he is a non striker he would remove both his uh, gloves and carry them in his hand he would not wear them remove them and carry them carry them and when he went to take strike he would put them on again many batters do that so when such a thing happens it is still part of his person it is still part of a, of his person all right but for a fielder an item of clothing or equipment he is holding in his hand or hand is not part of his person like uh, i am i have a cap if i am holding it in my hand it is not part of it, my person and if i feel the ball with that it is five run it is five run because i am not wearing it 
it is legitimate uh, clothing but i am not wearing it it is uh, therefore uh, not part of my person all right uh, a lot of these definitions we know a lot of these definitions the meaning will become clearer uh, as we go along uh, don't need no need to break read this again perhaps uh, after our session is over you can read it again clothing means other than whatever a player is wearing including items like spectacles jewelry all of that is clothing i am carrying a handkerchief i am having a napkin tucked into my uh, trousers either the front or the back or uh, even though he may be wearing some things which are not visible for protection a bat being carried by a batter does not come within this definition of clothing all right sorry hand hand for a batter or wicket keeper shall include both the hand itself and the whole of the glove worn on the hand which will be that is the definition we know what the offside and the onside means what is in front of the popping crease this is in front of the popping crease this is behind the popping crease all of that we have seen this is a graphic description of these terms we are all familiar with these terms there is no problem and we have appendix d we have appendix d where uh, uh these are all categories of bats you need not read them it won't be important from the from the point of view of examination and it will also uh, these are more or less now instructions only for the manufacturers to uh, conform to abide by so you need not uh, but then give it a read give it a read without uh, too much stress give it a read and uh, to and side inserts commercial items we don't need to uh, and then there is a picture of uh, ball bat gauge which has been prescribed nowadays in order to check that the bats are in order all right so more about this when we come to the law of bats okay and this is uh, law six the pitch and the creases a graphic representation of a graphical representation of the creases and the pitch though it has been shortened uh, how the pitches are all the uh, pitches we we'll learn about that when we come to that particular law and the stumps and the bales the measurements are given here now all these measurements are important from the uh, umpiring examination point of view when you are preparing all right and gloves wicket keepers gloves uh, there are certain restrictions on the wicket keepers gloves and they have what they mean by those restrictions are graphically described here we will deal with it when we come to that particular law this is appendix c just go over them that is all that is all i would want you to do just go over them like we have just read through them uh, the importance of some of them uh, these will be uh, brought home to you as we go along will uh, be brought home to you as we go along all right okay now uh, here any anything in particular about appendix a uh, any any query you might have anything at all give me a sec please Yeah. Anything? Anything you uh, think that uh, you might want to ask at this point, inquire at this point, and uh, I might add again, reiterate that uh, all of these uh, definitions will become clearer to you as we go along because they will appear. Uh, some of them will appear several times in the laws uh, while we study them, and it will become clearer. Right now, you need not just be aware that these uh, things are there. just be aware that is all i want you to do all right and uh, if you have no questions here then we will uh, start off with the preamble uh, start off with the preamble to the laws of cricket uh, uh, yes sir yes yes 
चल मी सर सर अभी सिंस वी वर डिस्कसिंग विकेट कीपर ग्लव्स अबाउट ना यस यस सो आई जस्ट वांट यस टेल मी आई जस्ट वांट फ्रॉम सर वाइल स्टंपिंग द पिंग इफ द बॉल इज स्टक इन बिटवीन द आर्म्स ऑफ अ विकेट कीपर uh i is it legal or illegal sir legal? what is illegal or legal sir i was sir i was why is no i lost you i lost you for a while why is why is huh yes yes tell me sir your voice is sir, breaking sir i was sir i was saying why i was saying why suppose a wicket keeper in a wicket keeper in about to stump yeah. yeah. but ball stuck between but the arms of the stuck between the arms of the yeah or is ball is not in the hands or is ball is not in the hands yes yeah. so, so what is your decision sir so it, what is, is it your decision sir it, is it illegal it is, the ball is stuck here yes the ball yes, is sir, stuck between the arms yes yes sir between yeah, the no, arms you can't break the wicket that yeah. is not uh, that is not legal the ball has to hit it or ball with the hand has to hit it. the ball has to reach there yes right that is right, not right. yes right that is right. not legal. right all right we will come to that so when we discuss this now let's go on with uh, the laws of cricket uh this is something that uh, yeah this is something now here uh, you see this this is something that uh, is critical for us for us all to understand uh, when it comes to before discussing the preamble uh, this is a favorite cricket quote of mine uh, it is by christopher martin jensen grace grace that is the word he says that it denotes beauty of movement and also beauty of conduct grace denotes beauty of movement and uh, movement and also beauty of conduct the most attractive cricketers are those who display it when batting bowling or fielding and when they have been given out lbw after a thin edge you need to show grace even then uh, and that is sort of part of the spirit of the game accepting the decision let everybody aim for grace especially in moments of elation and despair he is now talking not only merely about the game of cricket in life everybody has to aim for grace especially in moments of elation and despair that is why i love this saying please read it <laughs> i will believe has been an old friend of mine he has written a nice forward uh these are the chaps i have empired with sandeep and milan rege and uh, vijay chaugule uh, sanjay vandrekar and uh, salil ankola was a 15 year old when i started empiring shishir hatankari i have known for a long year many years lakshan kulkarni i invited these chaps to write uh, all uh, introduction about me uh, dilip of course to write uh, forward the forward they all of them obliged and uh, suresh shastri one of my colleagues in the uh, he used to play when i started umpiring and uh, here now in this book of mine there is uh, there are three sections actually the laws of cricket what we will be dealing with and there are charts and tables i'll uh, show you some of the charts and tables also uh, because when i started uh, teaching umpire uh, cricket umpire in the laws of cricket many of the laws many of the laws there is there are a lot of twists and turns in the laws there are uh, uh, there is uh, there are many cross references there are many cross, cross references there are also many uh, the law is stated then there is an exception to that particular law that statement the first statement there is an exception and there is an exception to the exception so all, which makes a, uh, a lot of difficult Uh, there is a lot of difficulty in understanding and i employed this tool of having uh, i devised some charts where i uh, charts and tables to break up those laws the provision i'll show you some of them as we go along and then i have got an appendix z1 uh, which is uh, examples of calculation of minimum overs in the last hour and examples of working of penalty time in this particular book all right 
Now looking at the preamble uh, of the laws of cricket. Now for many years, now see, let us look at what the preamble actually says. Now cricket owes much of its appeal and enjoyment to the fact that it should be played not only according to the laws, but also within the spirit of the game. Spirit of cricket. Uh, the major responsibility for ensuring play rests with the captain is one statement I want you to remember always. Because starting from here, this thread runs throughout the laws of the game. Throughout the laws of the game, right from up from here to law 42. That it is the, the primary responsibility rests with the captain. That is why recently in a match in England, uh, uh, a player was found guilty of tripping the batsman, actually tripping the batsman in running. He tried to trip him or did actually trip him. I haven't seen the video. I only read the report. And uh, Keteshwar Pujara, the captain, is also suspended. He is also suspended. He did nothing. But because of his responsibility as the captain to ensure that the game is played within the spirit of the game, he was suspended. The player, of course, uh, was uh, punished. The player involved, but it, the, it started with the captain. I'll I'll be repeating this thing to you time and again. You will see. Now, but this responsibility extends to all players, match officials, include which include umpires, and especially in junior cricket, teachers, coaches, and parents have a great responsibility in doing it, in inculcating in their ward, uh, the, their wards that spirit of the game. What is right? What is not right? That is what cricket involves. That is what cricket involves. Uh, here they have spelled out that cricket is central, uh, respect is central to the spirit of the game. Respect your captain, teammates, opponents, and authority of the umpires. Play hard and play fair. Accept the umpire's decision is part of the spirit of cricket. Create a positive atmosphere by your own conduct and encourage others to do likewise. You show everybody the way. Show self-discipline even when things go against you. That is important. And that is where uh, grace comes in. Congratulate the opposite, opposition on their successes and enjoy those of your own team. Uh, you should uh, be a good loser and you should be a good winner too. Because uh, you need grace even when winning. And uh, certainly when losing, you must congratulate your opponent. All right? Thank the officials and your opposition at the end of the match, whatever be the result. Uh, cricket is an exciting game that encourages leadership, friendship, teamwork, which brings together people from different nationalities, cultures, and religions, religion, especially when played within the spirit of cricket. So it is an all-binding uh, game, which can help to bind uh, us as people of different cultures and religions. And this is what the laws expect out of this. Now what happens is, uh, it is most unfortunate that to many, now see what uh, see over the centuries, what the spirit of cricket or spirit of the law meant was imbibed by generations of cricketers without the need felt to spell it out. Uh, but today it is felt that the dividing line between what is right and what is wrong, it has become very, very thin, very, very thin. The line is very thin. Gamesmanship is uh, one part and then unfair play, sometimes there is very little difference between the two. And some players just don't see that difference. That is the fact of the matter. It is not that that line, the dividing line between what is right and what is right, not right is just simply not discernible to some uh, players. That is the unfortunate part of it. Uh, nowadays, uh, we see and hear most days on TV words, spoken, mouth, language, actions, gestures and practices that have no places on the cricket field. I am sure you have seen it all. You watch cricket, you see that all this is not acceptable. One day, we, you see, the, they, players don't seem to realize that uh, uh, the see-all medium of television projects these images to millions of homes all over the world. 
the message given is this is cricket in all its ugliness they behave quite badly sometimes cricketers behave quite badly they don't realize that what we are doing is zoomed into uh, households all over the world and into birds come birds it is zoomed into the minds of the youngsters that yes this is acceptable the biggies are doing it so i can also do it it makes our life difficult at the lower level makes our life low or very difficult at lower level so therefore they don't they ought to realize their responsibility which unfortunately they do not and slowly it has come to be that they can uh, they face hard uh, harsh penalties for their actions all right uh, like i said that the greater danger is that this kind of behavior is likely to find acceptability as acceptability and lower level destroy the very fabric very fabric of the game so therefore uh, anybody who is associated with cricket who is involved owes to the game to do whatever they can to curb this growing menace all right the captain's responsibility is stated the what is involved in the spirit of the game is spelled out in the preamble and everybody needs to uh, understand that they should try to ensure that he does nothing absolutely nothing that will break bring the game into disrepute it is this basic education it should form the part of every cricketer's early coaching if not at all times during his playing career i am uh, reading this out of my book this is what i feel about it and uh, now here there was a term where every player and i mean also every umpire see when you go out for a match uh, especially a big match and all that or even the smallest of matches believe me you are watched you are watched whether on or off the field you are watched now i have been part of many uh, big matches and uh, you are watched then uh, you are probably staying in the same hotel that they are staying and uh, there are people who observe your every action and uh, you should not be doing anything which will bring the game into disrepute which will not, which is bringing the game into disrepute so it that responsibility is also yours it rests on your shoulders also umpire mamsa used to teach us uh, he had a favorite uh, term he said keep the white coat clean is what he used to say keep the white coat clean uh, it has remained now figurative uh, figurative statement because uh, now uh, white coats are gone but you keep your image clean keep yourself Uh, is what the message is all right it app- applies to umpires also now uh, here uh, just to tell you just to elaborate on some of these points respect your captain teammates and opponents and the authority of the umpire now i have seen uh, you must have also seen that a player is shown the way you have dismissed a player and has shown the way to the pavilion that is disrespect that is disrespect you have uh, players grimacing uh, at the striker the, the most celebrated instance i know is of sri uh, sant where uh, and even sometimes uh, that sharma sharma was that uh, what is his full name uh, from delhi he uh, used to do that indulge in it god knows if it was uh, kohli who was encouraging him to do it But anyway, he used to do a lot of it. Now the point is that uh, at this level, who is afraid of your uh, gnashing of teeth or uh, no, nobody? No cricketer uh, worth his salt is afraid of all this. You are making a fool of yourself. I remember Tristan uh, a game at uh, Palakkad where uh, Kerala was playing Himachal Pradesh, and that is the game in which uh, Tristan took five or six wickets, and that. brought him to the international level now he was a very good boy he was a very good boy somewhere along the line after that uh, he started indulging in all these things and uh, when it finally culminated in uh, his own teammate in the IPL harbhajan slapped uh, sreesan uh, sreesan tactically and this fellow burst into tears it came to that Uh, he acted in the same way to 
uh, Harbhajan and then Harbhajan actually slapped him. A very sad thing to happen. But there, along the way, he could should have been stopped. I would, as an umpire, would have stopped him long ago. Stopped him long ago. If I'm the match referee, I would have stopped him long ago. He couldn't go from match to match, and we watched him indulging in these antics of his. Even that guy Sharma, uh, sometimes, but on a lower scale. Srisan did a lot of it. I would uh, hold every umpire uh, who allowed him to do it. Every match referee who allowed him to do it. Responsible for his uh, decline. So that is where your responsibility comes in. That is where you need to take action and stop. I am sure it would have been stopped. I would have, in fact, figured he was going close to the striker, very close to the striker and uh, grimacing at him. I would have bloody drawn a line on the pitch and told him, don't go ahead of, in front of this. Maybe I would not have been able to enforce it. But the message would have gone that, look, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Nowadays, a lot of this is codified. You will be find in Law 42. I don't know if this is there. Uh, but everything is derived from the laws of cricket. The preamble, you have to show respect to your opponent. The kind of glee that uh, the fielding side sometimes shows at the dismissal of a batsman, very often, very often, I see uh, such glee shown. It is schoolboy. It is worse than schoolboy sometimes. Uh, come on, uh, show some dignity. You don't have to be doing the to be doing the aeroplane stunt every time you take a wicket. Earlier cricketers never used to do it. It has become quite the fashion. All right, high fives and all that don't matter. But to show such. Uh, Glee at the dismissal of a batsman, I think it is going overboard. Anyway, that is, but it doesn't harm uh, it. But this is, it only denotes a little, an, a bit of disrespect towards your opponent. All right, you have honestly got him out. Show him, show him the respect that he deserves. All right. Play hard, play fair. Uh, and uh, also congratulate the opposition on the success. Now, nobody perhaps plays the game. Played the game as hard as uh, uh, Richard did, Vivian Richards did. But there is a very old video, maybe I have it, of him visiting the, uh, visit, uh, going to the dressing room of his opponent and shaking everybody by the hand. I think he was a captain. And he's a hard. Cricketer, he was a hard cricketer. Nobody plays the game hard. Yes, on the field, play the game hard. But at the end of the game, you're all friends. You are friends. I have I have seen uh, India, New Zealand. I saw a lot of bad blood between the two teams. Uh, where I was the third umpire in one of the games there. I saw a bit of bad blood between the two. The incident had happened and that is how it was revealed. Now you, you go on a tour to a another country. Most of the time, it, you wasted your time if you haven't made at least three or four friends from the opposite side. You wasted your time playing the game, if you, that is the way I see it. Uh, there have been stories about, you know, people uh, sharing equipment, giving up their old equipment to other players, players on the other side. They have been doing that, a lot of it. Nowadays, people uh, play the game. It is, after all, a game. All right, play it hard, but uh, don't get too carried away by it, uh, is what I feel. That you're being too serious. You're being, I umpired during the phase when uh, uh, they played serious cricket, but they used to have fun. It was a game. Now, uh, you hardly ever see uh, a guy interacting with the crowd or uh, with his opponent. I hope to see more of that. You see quite the, uh, little of it nowadays. So that is what I feel about this game. And self-discipline is, uh, is also important. Congratulating. I told you that uh, uh, you should be a good loser. All right. You should show grace while losing. And uh, you should show grace while winning. Uh, there is one team, but it is Bangladesh, uh, which I have observed. 
that they show no growth grace while winning uh, it is unfortunate they should learn to do that their nagin dance and all that even the players will indulge in the nagin nagin dance and all that and uh, all their spectators are also in the same mold however that is uh, i hope that will change so that is uh, I, uh, just an example that uh, you ought to show grace when you are winning also and like you uh, need to show grace when you are losing uh, uh, yes all right now uh, that brings to me to the end of uh, the preamble and uh, and the appendices that we have discussed if is if, if there is anything to discuss if you have anything to ask me about these things uh, any comment you want to make you are most welcome to do so uh, before we can begin with law 1 the player yes anything that you would uh, placement yes who is it uh, this is sharik here yes sharik how are you So I'm fine. Thank you. I'm fine. Thank you, sir. Uh, regarding replacement, I was uh, about to ask questions. Yes. What role does an umpire play, or how much control does an umpire have with regards to replacement? Why should he need to have any? Why should he? We'll we'll discuss that when we come to this law. You are anticipating the this thing. Uh, why should you desire control over the replacement business of replacement? It is entirely in the hands of the opposite captain. entirely in the hands of the opposite captain i have no say in it i will have no say in it i will have no say in it and in the laws of cricket there is nothing like like to like replacement okay there is nothing like okay. like to like replacement in the laws of cricket in uh, higher grades of cricket there is like to like replacement and it is a match referee who has been entrusted with ensuring ensuring that uh, uh if an all rounder is uh, replaced another all rounder takes his place or a batter is replaced another batter takes his place uh, uh that kind of thing uh that that is the kind of thing which is there and even in bcci it is the match the bcci regulations it is the match referee who is interested with that as much well. we have no role to play in it i would not want to influence anything okay, in like okay, that okay sir Yeah, somebody raised the hand. Thank you. I forgot. Thank I you. forgot Thank to you. notice who it was. Um, that's me, I, uh, George. Um, that's me, yes, uh, George. George. Um, yes, yes. Sorry, Tell I me. hear the echo. I don't know from sorry, where. Sorry, I hear the echo. I don't know from where, but um, you spoke about the um, you spoke about the bowler. um, handing off a batsman bowler preamp, handing off a batsman yes. during the preamp. as an umpire does the law as an umpire does the law right right yeah right right does the law address this or is it is it does the law address umpire? this or is it is there anything on field umpire but see i had one occasion to do it sending of a player is uh, is actually in the code perhaps uh, let me see if it is in the bcci code or the icc code the i am part during the time it was not coded these things were not coded all right uh showing disrespect to your opponent is one and uh, let me check if icc has anything specific about this sending of a player because i know for a fact that uh, match referees have pulled up the bowler and find a bowler who sent off a player who sent off a player i know for a fact that it has happened in international cricket let me check if it is there is something specific in the icc code i'll check and tell you uh now like i told you it is not coded was not coded during our time and i was umpiring a one day international india versus uh, australia at kanpur where tom moody got uh, vinod kambli out got vinod kambli out and i think he got him bowled for us yeah got him out and he showed him the way uh, i stepped in i said tom you don't need to do this he already got him out and he said this that's all it is there was no action taken it was just an action observed and we checked it 
we don't want that kind of thing to be done but i believe that uh, it is now coded i'll have to look up the icc regulations to see uh, about uh, sending off a player and all that after a dismissal dismissal but i know for a fact that match referees have pulled up that kind of behavior they have fined players for that and docked them points or whatever i'll confirm this to you the whether it is coded or not i'll confirm hard coded or not i'll find out i'll find out thank you thank you yes anything anything else perhaps that action is described in one of the playing conditions that action is prescribed i believe all right shall i go on with law one then yes yes sir yes sir yeah. all right law of the player uh here now you see that uh, i have i use flags to point out certain important things and and that maybe and uh, box and also em emphasize certain points here as we go along uh, you will see them a player is uh, a match is played between two sides we know that each shall be of 11 players each each shall be of 11 players each and the captain has to be one of these 11 players the captain has to be one of these 11 players that is important and therefore it means that nobody outside the 11 can act as captain that is why i told you a substitute who is not as part of the 11 nominated players cannot act as captain you will find it in another place in the law but here the captain shall be one of the 11 players and uh, nobody other than the 11 can be a captain the two teams are permitted to agree to play the match with less than or more than 11 players match can take place see the laws of cricket uh, provide for all levels of the game and all formats of the game and all uh, possibilities it is absolutely flexible uh, you are the two uh, teams playing now i i uh, you can play 12 aside you can play 15 aside like i have i've taken a team to surat and we are carrying 15 people i want all of my 15 to be playing uh, so we tell the opposite time, team that uh, all right we'll play you play 15 and we play 15 it is possible to do that you play six aside matches on smaller grounds six aside matches on smaller grounds so the law is very flexible it allows you to do all of this <clears throat> but what it also says is not more than 11 players shall be on the field at any time it limits the number of fielders to 11 it can be less but not more than 11 uh, it can be less but not more than 11 all right but and then when it comes to the two sides the <clears throat> making up of two sides uh, the history of the game is uh, full of uh, matches record of matches where uneven sides have played like i am uh, from a particular club in mumbai i've got a strong team uh, i'll play 11 against 15 of your they are the others are weaker side i'll play 11 against 15 of your it is a match can be held like that the history of the game is uh, there it's sort of handicap the stronger team a team plays a handicap gives an advantage to the weaker team by allowing them to play within the laws allow it the laws allow it nowhere that there is a prohibition now it may so happen that a side is reduced now however 11 players it may so happen that a side is reduced during the match to a number fewer than the previously agreed number 11 or whatever we may have played six six aside or 15 aside or uh, six aside or whatever now suppose it is 11 now for various reasons my number is reduced from 11 now these reasons can be either illness through illness i don't have a substitute or through injury i don't have a substitute my players have not failed to turn up absenteeism uh, it rained heavily and then they haven't uh, the transport uh, local transport failed uh, at the field i have got only seven players i am forced to play with seven or I have, some players are suspended 
or for any other reason it can go below 11 the number of uh, player fielding can bowl, bowl go below 11 can go below 11 now in case the number of players falls below this the match cannot shall not be stopped it can go on just because there are seven fielders on the field of play or even five fielders on the field of play against the 11 originally players in one bus load has been turned up you are forced to take the field because uh, the laws don't allow you to postpone uh, delay the match uh, for a very long time so you are forced to play this match can go on the law says this match can go on as long as it is practically possible to do so it is practically possible to do so and provided no laws or agreements made before the toss are violated provided that no laws are violated <coughs> or no agreements made before the toss are violated now an example of this i can give you is agreement made before the toss one example i can give you is when there is an agreement to play this match uh, on limited overs basis there is one condition which says that uh, the number of overs each bowler will bowl is one fifth of the total now if your number is reduced to such an extent as long as that rule is not broken you will go on playing but when it comes to you don't have another bowler to bowl you can't uh, allow anybody to bowl the 11th over when it comes to that you will have to stop the game let the law makers the rule makers decide what to do with this particular game but there you will stop it you will not allow carry on with the game and allow this particular law uh, rule to be broken you can't play okay they don't have let's play 11 we have to finish no the law says that this shall be it is not possible to fulfill this agreement which made before the toss it is violating that agreement the match cannot go on the match cannot go on all right now nomination and replacement of players uh nomination of the players has to be made in writing before the toss by each captain to one of the umpires so it has to be in writing when is it to be made before the toss by whom by each captain to whom to one of the umpires not to both the umpires one of the umpires now let me ask you a question let me ask you a question uh i'll come to the question a little later all right nomination of the players has to be made in writing remember before the toss by each captain to one of the player umpire all right and also if a captain is not available for the nomination of the players then any person associated with that team may act as his deputy to do the nomination so if a captain is not available this is uh, to be noted now the doesn't generally happen must have happened and uh, uh, somebody associated with the team is you may say that it is uh, perhaps the coach the captain has yet to arrive at the ground uh, the coach uh, does the nomination or the team club chairman comes and does the nomination perfectly all right you will accept that nomination you will accept that nomination because the laws allow it and uh, once that nomination is done you will not allow the captain who may come later to change that nomination because it has the uh, it is a legal nomination you will not allow him to say why did you play so and so player player a i would have played player b you won't allow the change all right Uh, if a captain is not available at any time, a deputy shall act for him. That is what the law says. After the nomination of the players is done, 
only one of the nominated players can act as deputy and discharge the duties of the and respond as stated including the toss once the once the nomination is done a deputy can uh, act for him for the captain he can even go for the toss now that deputy has to be one of the 11 players if somebody else comes for the toss you uh, you don't know him as the captain or the side Uh, are you in the eleven? He says yes, I am in the eleven. He can go for the toss. Otherwise, he cannot go for the toss. They can't just send anybody there. After the toss, only the deputy will. Uh, after the nomination, only the deputy has to be part of the nom- nominated player. Now I ask you something. Uh, <clears throat> it is a nine o'clock match. Start of play is nine o'clock, and uh, you have arrived there at uh, say ten o'clock start. You have arrived here at ten eight uh, thirty or there early in the morning, and you are sitting around sipping tea when one of the captains or perhaps both captains come and give you their nomination sheet. They give you this in writing, and you take it. You take it. uh what will you tell the two captains now my colleague has not yet arrived my colleague has not yet arrived i am the only person there uh, he has given it to me will i say that please wait till my colleague arrives or will i say that do it at the top or will i accept this nomination what will you do Yes. Can I have some answers? I would have told him to uh, give me at I the time of. I would have told him to uh, give me at the, at the time, time of the talk. Yes. Talk. Okay. Yes. Any other yes. responses? Yes. What will you tell him? If the toss is if done, if the toss is done, thirty minutes, thirty minutes, I would, I would, I would accept it any time, thirty minutes, minutes, minutes before the game. Before the game, you will accept it any time before that toss. About thirty minutes. About thirty minutes. No, I mean uh, the toss is at nine uh, thirty. I mean you will wait uh, like uh, Shubhra said. Uh, you will uh, uh, let tell him to do it at the toss, right? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. 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 Y
take it in two copies check it because then they want need to they want us to check that uh, they are registered players and or not and all that and everybody every each player has a registration number check it and all that we take it now in this particular case where there is all that hassle is not there we take it and we tell them all right here's a copy uh, give it to us in two copies you do the exchange at the top but for all purposes the nomination is over because do the exchange at the top uh, why because the two captains need to know uh, the composition of the opponent's team that is why it is uh, and it has become a public spectacle but suppose but they are there only to do the top the two captains are there only to do the top but traditionally the nomination is done the exchange of teams is done uh, before the top so that naturally they the opponent need to know who they probably know earlier but there is absolutely no bar for you to accept the nomination before the top in the pavilion in the pavilion absolutely no bar absolutely no bar suppose somebody other than the known captain comes to uh, for the top if you don't have the nomination how are you what are you going to ask him are you one of the nominated players only when the nomination is done he becomes one of the nominated players so he is entitled to come for the toss also the captain is sitting inside look i have been unlucky with three tosses of wine in uh, sequence in succession and i am letting uh, mr x come for the toss but mr x has to be on my nomination list is he there how are you going to verify it if the nomination is not made how are you going to verify it all right so that is why please remember that the nomination is an independent act in itself has nothing to do with the toss except to say that it will be done before the toss it need not be on the field of play it can be entirely in the pavilion there is no problem with that one of the captains comes up comes to us to one of the umpires and gives a list of this is my list of players for today's game is probably signed is on their whatever letter it you may part with a copy to him or or make a note or they all right you do an exchange just to let the opposite captain know that the nomination the, the composition of the team the composition of the team all right now any player may be replaced after nomination only with the consent of the opposite captain now i have now i have received this list i have received this list at 8:30 10 o'clock start 8:30 and i am sitting there my colleague has also arrived and we both see that as is usual the players will step out onto the field in front of the pavilion to take a knock there somebody bowling somebody fielding somebody batting and a lot of times they don't have gloves they don't have pads or they may have gloves but no pads the batter and one of them you see in front of you is hit on the knee is hit on the knee he is one of the nominated players he is hit on the knee and uh, the toss is uh, due at uh, at whatever uh, 8 uh, 9:30 30 at 9 o'clock the captain of that player comes to you and says sir you saw that fellow get injured on the field of play and he is quite severely hit and i'd like to replace him what will be your response what will be your response will you allow the replacement or what will you tell him yes Think it would be uh, depending on the opposite, opposite captain. Yeah. Uh, opposite captain. Sorry. But will you will you allow it or will you not allow it? What will be your response? You say that you will tell him to refer him to the opposing captain. Yes. Any other responses? Yep. Get yep. the get the consent from the opposing captain. Opposing captain. Yes. Shubhada. 
Yes. Now, why will you do it? Why will you do it? Because the nomination is complete in itself. The nomination is done. After that, any change in the nomination has to have the consent of the opposing captain. Nothing to do with the toss. The toss hasn't happened. The toss is still half an hour away. The nomination has been done. Therefore, you will tell him, sir, you have nominated your 11. That is now concrete, written in concrete. Uh, if any change needs to be made, you must be talking to, you should be talking to the opposing captain. All right? And Sharik, like I told you that I will have no say in the matter. I will only refer him to the opposing captain. All right? A player may be replaced after nomination only with the consent of the opposing captain. So, so nomination is an independent act. Nothing to do with the toss. It is just a submitting of a piece of paper to me, to the umpire. That is nomination. All right, please be clear about it. Uh, the toss doesn't add anything to the nomination. At one time, it was believed that toss sets the seal on the nomination. No, sir, it does not. It does not. The exchange of teams is a different thing. Before the toss, we are keeping up with the tradition of the game. But you do the nom I suggest always uh, make sure that the nomination comes to you prior to going out for the toss. That is how now you should be following in any of your games. Please make the nominations. Please let us have your 11. Let us have your uh, 11 nominated sides. He ought to submit in writing. He is not supposed to submit to the other captain. He is supposed to submit to me. So please let us have it. In any of your games in the future, I suggest you do it. Nomination, please bring us the nomination. We would like to see the composition of the team. And after that is done, you can hand it over. There are legal implications to this. That is why you please insist on doing it. Okay. Otherwise, it is a matter of exchange of teams because the other opposing captain needs to know the composition of the team. All right. Now, here we come to something important. Any replacement player shall be considered the same player as the nominated player as he has replaced for the purposes of these laws. A has been replaced by X. Now, X takes the place of A in all respects. When you read ahead, you will realize uh, in to what extent. A replacement may not bat in an innings in which the nominated player he is replacing has completed his innings. Any unserved penalty time, warnings or suspension that apply to the original nominated player will be inherited by his or her replacement. Uh, let us take the second part first. Suppose there is uh, that player, that particular player has been absent uh, from the field of play and he has incurred penalty time. He is say minus 30 minutes behind. He has been out 30 minutes. <coughs> uh, he got injured while on the field of play. He got injured, uh, pulled a muscle and had to go out. And uh, later on, uh, a substitute has come in its place and later on uh, it is found that he can no longer participate. It is a bad tear, bad muscle tear. He can't participate in the game. He has been allowed complete rest uh, to that. He will damage himself very badly if you play it again. And the opposing captain comes and tells you that, uh, look, we want a replacement. The opposing captain allows the replacement, all right? So what happens now is that this new player who has come in, he doesn't come in with a clean slate. He carries the burden of the 30 minutes time. That 30 minutes time he carries that burden. The new player also, he has to serve that on the field of play before uh, he can bat or he can bowl or whatever. The new player can bowl also. He is totally entitled to bowl and bat. He is a replacement. So he is a nominator. He can bowl, he can bat, he can keep because he can do anything. He is not a substitute. So remember, and any other suspension. Suppose that original player had received a warning as a bowler or as a fielder. The replacement will carry that warning or caution. He will carry that warning and caution. 
when he no clean slate he steps into the shoes of the original player that's what that's the basic idea he steps into the shoes of the original player or there may be a suspension law 42 now allows you to suspend a fielder a player for 10 over now he is suffering a suspension the replacement will also be will carry that suspension also he is for all purposes stepping into the shoes of the original player that is to be understood the point to be understood now a replacement may not bat in an innings in which the nominated player he is replacing has completed an innings when does a batter complete his innings when he is out all right is that fine when he is out now imagine a situation where uh, i am a batter i am a batter i get hit on the head or wherever by the ball and i am carried away and uh, i am retired not out for the moment i am retired and i go out and i require medical attention i go to the doctors and all that i have been advised not to participate in the match now i cannot i cannot participate in the match or i have sustained a fracture for all you know all right i can't play the captain comes to us and the captain come to us and says yes all right they have spoken and he is allowing a replacement he is allowing a replacement now can this replacement continue the innings of the original batter yes my question is can the original can the uh, sub, uh, replacement batter x continue the innings of batter a who has been replaced yes question Yes, sir. He can. Yes, sir. He can. Yes. Tell me. He will. He can continue. He will. He can continue. Sorry. He can. He can continue. You say yes. Any other responses? Yes, sir. If he was not. Yes, not sir. Out, if he said. was not not out, as you said. Yes. Can the replacement continue the inning? He can continue. Can the replacement? So. I huh? don't think so. George, you don't think he, so. No, he, the um, original no, player the, is um, original out. Player is retired. He is retired, no. he is retired yes, but original player has not completed his innings. Right, but he's still not out. Right, but um, I mean, he's still, still not out. Um, I mean, he still took the, the field. Yes, yes, I agree. He's retired. I mean, he's left the field. He's retired. Uh, out, not out depends uh, on uh, the reason for his retirement. he can always he could always have come back and played himself if he came back and played he would you would allow him to come and play all right yeah now similarly yeah. the replacement player will also be allowed to bat now don't ask me how the scorers are going to record it because i don't know but batsman x will come back and a replacement may not bat in an innings in which the nominated player that he is replacing has completed his innings now this man the original man has not completed his innings so therefore the innings can be completed by not allowing him to complete that innings means you are putting the batting side at a disadvantage so it is not a true replacement so a full replacement and a proper replacement necessarily means that he will be allowed to complete the innings now 50 by the previous player and the 50 by the other player whether it will be a century or not don't ask me ask a scorer or statistically what it will be for statistic what it will be i don't know but the point is i have to let him come in back because uh, batsman a had not completed his innings had he completed his innings there that fellow you 12 can't bat 12 cannot bat 
so that normal the new player will not get any batting in that innings he can bat in the second innings if he is, uh, there is scope when it comes to the second innings he can bat but not in this innings because his original player had completed the innings so there can't be 12 people batting but here it will be considered as only 11 batting it will be considered as only 11 batting that is this is uh, what this means all right i want you to appreciate that note it and appreciate that that a replacement player cannot bat if the original player has completed his inning but if he has not completed his inning he will come and bat that is the meaning true meaning of a full replacement otherwise you are putting the batting side at a disadvantage it doesn't stand to reason aap replacement de rahe hain to usko aapko he will have to bat also all right now <coughs> captain If a captain is not available at any time, a deputy shall act for him. All right. How are we on time? We need to twenty-nine. Our sessions will generally run over slightly uh, because, uh, you, as you know, that cricket is not a whistle-stop game. We complete the over and progress uh, before we call time. So I'll just finish this. There's not much left in law one and law two. We simply cannot start because it is pretty long. We'll do it uh, on Thursday. now if a captain is not available at any time a deputy shall act for him all right if a captain is not available for nomination of the player then any person associated with the team can act we have already seen it after the nomination is done only one of the nominated player shall act as deputy and discharge the duties of the responsibilities and responsibilities of the captain as stated in the laws including at the toss so only the nominated player can come out for the toss either he is a captain himself or one of the 11 nobody else can nobody else can but here this curious phrase is also a clause is also to be uh, understood that anybody associated with the team can do the nomination that person but cannot uh, go for the toss because he is not uh, unless he is himself nominated he is nominated himself all right the responsibility of the captain it is repeated here at all times the captains are responsible for ensuring that play is conducted within the spirit of cricket as well as within the laws this theme you will see this theme going throughout the law started from the preamble it will go right up to law 42 it is the captain's responsibility it is the captain's responsibility it they mention the preamble here and law 41 unfair pay fair unfair play all right so this law squarely places the responsibility upon the two captains for ensuring that play, uh, ensuring fair play even if the captain is not directly involved in any act of unfair play he will be held liable for any penalties like cheteshwar pujara was suspended he had nothing to do with it but he was held responsible this principle of the captain being always responsible maintained through the laws as is evidenced by the reporting procedure and post match action in the laws covering uh, all acts of unfair play i'll uh, come to this again when we uh, see it all right when we come to each of the laws you i'll point out to you uh, all that is there okay now uh, we since because we had already done uh, most of this particular law this part we have brought we we are at the end of law 1 i'm not starting law 2 what i suggest you do is uh, please just go over uh, law 2 and 3 uh, every time i suggest uh, the laws ahead of us just give it a reading before we start the session it will help it will be helpful to you all right now uh, we will close the session but then before that uh, i invite uh, any questions that you might have Uh, sir, Any not question. a question, but uh, uh, sir, not a question, I'm but uh, just a thing. I'm Geo-meet, using uh, Geo Meet uh, for the first time, but I hear a very sharp echo. I'm not able to speak. I mean, I think that's the problem with. I don't know. My brothers are facing a problem about echo. Uh, sir, maybe because you are sharing your. Uh, sir, maybe screen? because you are sharing your screen. No, sharing the screen shouldn't uh, give a problem. Uh, sometimes there is a connectivity issue. 
sharing the screen screen doesn't give up but then are you who who else is feeling of finding an echo i think i also had that same problem uh, i think i no, also no. had that same we problem uh, not not when you are we speaking, are speaking. Uh, shadik when you are speaking you yeah. uh, get a, an echo yeah so especially when we are speaking we hear an echo yeah so especially you. when we are speaking we hear an echo but we can hear you oh uh, clearly okay uh, what about you george yeah same same thing <laughs> oh yeah, no, same, I, same I, thing. I, I i don't know what the problem is uh there have been no such complaints uh, earlier let's see i hope it sorts it out uh, i'll just talk to these chaps that there is an echo from the speaker their audience may say uh, though those people are very good in support so i'll talk to mumtaz mumtaz ali i'll talk to him tomorrow and let me see what uh, he tells us i'll report to him this problem but then generally i am uh, let us hope it sorts itself out because it become very difficult when that echo is there very difficult to talk i quite appreciate that so can you so try, can you uh, try uh, stop sharing now uh, sharing, sharing, your sharing, sharing your screen sharing your screen i can i can remove i can i can remove i'll stop the share i'll stop the share uh, which i have already done i will try now i now think yes sir now, now there is no echo now there is no echo sharik yeah, you yeah. try sir now there is no echo i think uh, you'll when you share oh, your yeah. screen you will have to uh, yeah. unmute uh, unmute mu mute your screen the desktop and because you are speaking from the phone maybe that's the reason there is a double no i i don't know what it is uh, i don't know what it is but then all right I, now it's that, this is the case now it's uh, clear now let me let me share it let me share it again uh, let me share it again we'll check it all right okay. i'll share screen now now you can now check from your end uh, i can't see your screen i can't I, see your screen can you hear my no, no, no. echo problem is there echo yeah. is there yeah. there is echo is there. problem even now yes now yes. i just share the screen all right can you see the share screen now you try test the echo uh Oh. I try to speak now. Yes, I. If I try to speak now, yes, I hear an echo. Okay, Shubhada. Yes, sir. George. Echo problem. Yes, sir. Yes. After sharing the screen. Okay, screen. George. Okay, George. Yes. What about you? Yep. Same. Same. Oh, okay, okay. Chalo, ठीक है. This is something concrete. At least uh, we have at least established a connection between share screen and uh, the echo. So let me see. Let me let me talk to him tomorrow. First thing tomorrow morning, I'll talk to him. and we'll uh, i'll have him on a meeting and then i'll ask him to check it out i'll share the screen and do the same things tomorrow first thing okay i'll stop the share screen now uh, tell me uh, anything any questions uh, any any doubt any please no sir uh, sir thank you my question is uh... i have one question uh, yes. it's about if uh, as you said one of the captain submitted their nomination and yes. uh, other other has not submitted and the yes. one who who has submitted he he came after 15 minutes or 20 minutes and said oh one player we are not uh, like we are not pl uh, planning to put him in and i want to change yes. and as uh, the other team has not submitted can i change without uh, the other team opposite team's uh, captain's consent so is it possible no 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 it is not once the action is done wo patthar ke lakir hai it is final the nomination is done and the nomination uh, his change uh, cannot be permitted on the basis that the other fellow has yet to make his nomination no you have made your nomination and you are bound by it you are bound by it the other chap has uh, not yet uh, come in and given the nomination but uh, it, it doesn't have to it cannot be simultaneous also always it cannot be also simultaneous always all right okay okay thank you sir i i i still wouldn't allow him to change without the consent of the opposing captain okay okay sir um yes how about um usually when the roster is provided usually they allow you know 11 regular nominated players and then they will have a few substitutes yeah so in order to change the substitute as well we have to run that by the oppo opposing captain 
see what happens is uh, the laws do not ask you to name the substitute they never did uh, but nowadays uh they tell you that you will name for four substitutes and all that the pcs tell you that the laws don't even ask you to name your nominated players and there have been many instances in international cricket where an indian has uh, fielded in play for an, uh, an english player because they had uh, what was at that time known as the bombay belly and uh, many players used to fall ill water uh, was a big problem for visiting teams in water uh, drinking water in india uh, and uh, there was no such bar now icc regulations and even bcci regulations require that uh, you will nominate uh, 11 and you will also nominate uh, four substitutes and i think the Uh, law about changes making a change will apply uh, to the substitute also under those circumstances will apply to them also but as far as the law is concerned only the 11 only the 11 okay. and if he gives you only 11 you will not uh, ask for it your like, special regulations do ask for uh, by name four more as who are substitute and who should also be uh, say eligible to play for your county and those are the rules there eligible to play for your county so then in that case uh, you'll have to look in that that particular rule to say see whether it applies to the substitute also this rule about replacement you'll have to look at that i think it will apply to that I think it will apply to that. Those four also. Otherwise, we are nominated. They are even though they are in that list. Even though they are in that list, they are not uh, part of the nominated players. They may be in that list, but they are not part of the nominated players because nominated player is exclusively the eleven. the term nominated player applies exclusively to the 11 it's like that so all below the line players uh, are substitute yes any other question so hasan how are you finding the instruction uh, today yes sir Yeah, you are all right with this. Yes, yes, sir. I can understand them. Yes, you can understand. There is no problem. Uh, Hasan is a newbie. He is a young chap who plays cricket. Uh, is it an umpire? And he aspires to be an umpire. That is why he is here. And uh, uh, Kabir, Kabir is your name. I gather. All right. Yes. So. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes, if you have any issues, any problems, uh, uh, because we have uh, most of the others are uh, practicing umpires, and they will uh, be more, perhaps more readily understand some of the things you might not. So, any time you want uh, any clarification, further clarification, don't just don't hesitate. All right? Sure, sir. Yeah, don't hesitate to ask. Okay. Yes, uh, I'll let you. Tell me. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, any other questions please before we uh, stop the recording no sir yes go ahead your floor yes so if there is, if there are no questions shall i stop the recording for today yes sure sir thank you yeah okay